In this video, we are going to talk about the situation of Kama Piliat and Keza Chiefs. We're also going to talk about the transfer of Mohammed Hussein to Keza Chiefs, clarifying what is actually happening there. Hello and welcome to Kosi Nation Fan TV. I am Pilo, I am your host, and this, this is where fans meet and talk about Keza Chiefs. I'm a Kosi Football Club. We know the drama that happened with Kama Piliat, but let me take you back in case you forgot. Kaiser Chiefs were in a contract with Kama Piliat. Reportedly, Kama Piliat was earning 850,000 rands. And Kaiser Chiefs and Kama Piliat had signed a contract up to the 30th of June. The 30th of June comes, and then his contract expires, and now they offered him a new contract, which was now 200,000, according to reports. What happens is that Kama Piliat walks out on Kaiser Chiefs, is like, nah, fam, and then he leaves the Chiefs and then we're all sad or some people were happy. But there was that part we were losing a quality player, but there was that part he's getting he's injured all the time in any case, so it's fine. Let him go. But what happened after that is what makes it even more interesting. And what happens after that makes it even more interesting. Because Kaiser Chiefs releases a statement, they are saying that Kama Piliat has not returned the calls, we've tried to negotiate with him and all of that stuff. But you know what they did not do? They did not waste any time in passing his number 11 jersey to Bozan. However, there's something else that they did not do, which most of us probably missed. They did not say Kama Piliat has officially left Kaiser Chiefs. I know, I know that players, when they come to the end of their contract, verily they are going to leave the club. But still, clubs will still announce that the player has left the team if their contract has not been renewed. They will never just keep quiet if a player left. Because you remember when those nine players left the Chiefs all at once, some of them were out of contract, like Kukatos. They didn't say, ah, Vele, his contract had come to an end, so we're not going to announce his departure. But they did say that Katos has left Chiefs, we wish him all the best, blah, blah, blah. But with Ukama, they haven't said that he's no longer a Kaiser Chiefs player. His contract with Kaiser Chiefs has ended, but they've not said... He's gone. And that leaves a lot of questions because you're thinking to yourself, why have they not done this? Obviously, Kama is a good player. Obviously, Kama adds experience into the team. I think they are still, they were hoping that he can still come back because, as I said, you don't just go out there and find a Kama Piliat for free because right now, well, they did find this one for free, but they're not going to find the other one for free. And we know that KZ Chiefs are not very... Uh, uh, um, happy with spending a lot of money in the transfer window. And Ukama right now, what has happened with him is the fact that he was linked with a move to North Africa, was linked with a move to UAE, he was linked with a move to Dynamos in Zimbabwe who have said they want to sign him, but none of those teams have signed him. So as the window, as the transfer window draws to a close, he still remains, quote-unquote, a Kaiser Chiefs player because, well, I don't even know why I'm using this. He's kind of a Kaiser Chiefs player just that he hasn't renewed his contract because we've seen players running out of contracts, but then only to be offered a new one and they stay in the team. So we're going to wait and see because I don't think Dynamos can offer Ukama Piliat the 200,000 that Kaiser Chiefs are, offered him, are offering him right now because it's either the 200,000 or you go to Dynamos and you get 50,000. So if you are Kama Piliat, you might just have to think, you know what? Let me humble myself. I will be a good experienced player at Kaiser Chiefs and see if they are still open to negotiations. And I think by the time he comes back, that offer will be down 250000 because, well, we offered you the money, you said no, and you were unprofessional. But think the question rests on you guys. What do you actually think Chiefs should be doing with Ukama Piliat if he does come back, that is? If he comes back and he says, you know what, I didn't like that, but I've explored my options, now I'm coming back. Do you think Chiefs should actually say, okay, fine, come back and be our player, or was what he did so unprofessional and unforgivable that they should just say, go? Because if you look at Kaiser Chiefs right now, where Vuranga is a striker, where Vu Gonzalez is a striker, clearly Utuba, we don't trust him. So he would be the third or the backup forward. He can also play as a 10. So he kind of does give you options still if he comes back, but I'll leave that to you. What do you think about him? Please do make sure to like the video so that YouTube can spread this video to more fantastic people like you.
Mohammed Hussein linked with the KZ Chiefs that left back spot because Chiefs are not happy. But I will start by saying this. According to the information that I had and the research that I had done, if a player has played five years in South African football, then they are regarded as South African football players and they no longer take that foreign sport. But upon doing further research and talking to other people, I found that it's actually 10 years. Now, that's confusing to me. And I want to ask you, Uguti, which one is it? The people who reported that story that I then reported to you are Sokala Duma. And as we know, Sokala Duma is not really the most reliable news source. So it is just possible that since the news have dried out, they just went back to the stories that were up there and they talked about to Mohammed Hussein. Because if you think about it, the only way that KZ Chiefs can sign Mohammed Hussein would be releasing one of the foreigners. And there's no foreigner that you can look at and say he can replace. Actually, there is. And that is directly Utove. By replacing Utove with Hussein, that would happen. But he only signed his new contract last season. And I don't think they will just release a player a season after he came. But they actually did with Ukeleb. But we'll never know what case achieves. But I want to hear you guys, like, teach me, educate me. What information do you know about this Thing of foreigners in South Africa. Is it five years or is it ten years? The situation of Kaiser Chiefs and the young players, because I have even seen this thing is continuing to happen on Twitter because a lot of people are now talking about Mulifin's Egi not wanting to play the young players. Because now some people have come out and said Mulifin's Egi is actually protecting Mtutuzi Shabalala and Usam Gelozwan. And to me, the question that I have even now to this day is how are you protecting Tutuzi Shabalala and how are you protecting Usam Gelozwane? Because the word that we had when Atazwane was, was appointed the say is the same thing that we had when Umli Fintek was appointed is that there will be continuity. But we're not seeing continuity with how the team is set up. Well, the formation, we are seeing continuity. But in terms of how we're playing, in terms of the personnel that we're using, that is not reflective of continuity. And it's too early to obviously judge and dismiss players this far. But I will say, Mina, personally, I believe, and I strongly believe, Uguti, Mtutuzi Shabalala can give us more than what Mtutuzi Mtanzani gives us. No, Mtutuzi Mtanzani is not a bad player. But to Shabalala, as young as he is, I feel like he's more comfortable on the ball. And he can also move wider and play as a winger and get the ball from there and cut in. But he also is able to manipulate space that he has in that midfield role po position that he plays. I'm not saying Mtutu Zimtanzan is a bad player, by no means. I can also say the same thing with a player like Usam Gelozwane. Usam Gelozwane, if you are saying Mtutu Shabalala is small in terms of the body, Sam Gelozwane also, to me, looks like a better fit than Umtutu Zimtanzane. Because also, um, Sam Gelozwane, if you are playing this formation or system that we are playing of deep line, of deep two defensive midfielders, then you can slot to Sam Gelozwane as the second six and allow Castillo to play as a 10. And what you are doing there, you are actually allowing Sam Gelozwane to be that deep lying playmaker because Sam Gelozwane is not naturally a defensive midfielder, because that you will still leave it too much, or stable, or unjabulo ngobo. But Usam Gelozwane is that player who plays deep, helps the team build up from the back, and sees the players running, and start playing the ball to them, and pick the passes. So if I look at Usam Gelozwane and Umtutuzi Shabalal, I still see usefulness with them. Even bringing them on in the second half, I still see them being very useful, because... Sam Gelozwan can calm the game down. You have Umatlo, yes, it does win, win Azama fouls when he comes in. But I, I will say this, I've not been convinced by Umatlo. But with more chances, hopefully he does convince me. But I'm not seeing any continuity right now because now the two players that were, were key last season are now just being chucked out. And I don't think that's good for them. And as I've said before, their confidence is being hurt, and it's clearly, you can see it, Mabe or Mapa had not been called back to the bench. But anyways, what do you think about this situation? Let me know down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, remember, equals, Alpelumoy.